welcome this Sunday to Bethel, which we know now means house of the Lord. Beit in Hebrew means house, and El means Lord. Put together, Bethel means house of the Lord. We are in December. December has one guarantee. This is absolutely, undoubtedly, completely, unconditionally true. Year after year. It's not necessarily snow. It's not necessarily a perfect Christmas. It's not necessarily getting the gifts you want or giving the gifts you want to give or getting Christmas cards out on time. It's not necessarily getting up all the right decorations or having the Christmas lights work when you need them to. But without a question, without a doubt, every December is a 100% guarantee that there will be an excess of sweets. <laughs> Gingerbread cookies, fudge, bars, candy cane cookies, peanut blossoms, spritz, almond bars, lemon squares, truffles, you name it. Whether you've been healthy this year or not, December comes and so does the extra sugar, butter, and chocolate. They're around every corner. It's impossible to escape, avoid, or deny. Well, in an effort to keep my inevitable weight gained down to a minimum this month, I was at the gym this past Friday morning. And as I jumped onto the elliptical, turned on my workout playlist on my iPod, and pressed the quick start button, I looked ahead at me at two different TV screens. And one TV screen had on The Price is Right. Drew Carey, the new Bob Barker, was living into the role of having guests come on down to give the closest bid on new cameras, household appliances, and even a new car. Contestants spin the wheel to find themselves the lucky ones, hopefully in the showcase showdown, competing for the best of prices. The other TV screen, however, was MSNBC. And if you remember what you were doing this past Friday morning, I'm sure you know what was being covered. Minute-by-minute minute updates from Newtown, Connecticut told the horrific details of the tragedy in Sandy Hook Elementary School. Reporters revealed the abominable news as soon as they received it, as death tolls grew and the hearts of our nation sunk deeper and deeper. Disbelief, tears, rage. I cannot even begin to imagine the overwhelming grief of these people, this community, our country, and our world. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Today is December 16, 2012. We gather today for two very different reasons. On one hand, as people of faith, we all come here, we all turn to God in tragic times like this. And on the other hand, we're approaching Christmas. And at Bethel Highlands today, there's a Christmas program. The kids are ready to show what they've prepared. Families are excited to take pictures. And we all, today, come for worship. So today, we're gathered in the tension in between tragedy and celebration. Celebration in the midst of tragedy, and tragedy in the midst of celebration. And believe it or not, this fits well with the setting of the first Christmas. Pastor John Lesbach told me this week, Christmas came at night. And Christmas always comes at night. It was into such a brutal and callous world as this that our Savior Christ was born. I'd like to say a few words to the kids today, young or old, 
and maybe a word that can be carried out to kids in our lives after the service. First of all, God loves you, and God loves all the kids very, very, very much. And God cares about you and all children very, very, very much. Pastor Van told me yesterday, God cares enough about children to become one himself. For all the kids today, you and they all may be experiencing many different feelings. And all feelings are okay in tragedy like this. Please encourage them, and let's be encouraged, to talk to your family, your teachers, school counselors, your pastors, and church leaders. It's okay to tell them how you feel. And adults, God loves you very, very, very much. And God cares about you very, very, very much. It's okay for us also to experience many different feelings. We all have our own questions. Please let us all feel free to talk to family, teachers, school counselors, pastors, church leaders, resources, and each other with all our questions. But also, let's listen to the kids. Let's have their questions be our guide. Let's have a pulse on their feelings and be patient as they give clues to what they want to talk about. And it's okay for us not to have the answers. And for all of us, we may wonder, what then should we do? Well, in our gospel text today, the crowds had just heard a very difficult message from John the Baptist. In some ways, they felt afraid, helpless, hopeless, powerless. And they turned to John and asked, what then should we do? And to the crowds as a whole, Jesus responded by saying, if you have more than your need, whether in terms of clothing or food, share it with those who are in need. And to the tax collectors, John said, stop stealing from your neighbors. And to the soldiers, John said, no more using your power to take advantage of people. And what is interesting in these responses is that John tells them not to do something different, but to keep doing what they were already doing, but just to do it differently. David Lowe's, a Bible scholar, writes, the day after... Here in John Creek, presumably the tax collectors are still collecting, and the mercenaries are still soldiering. But they are doing it better, doing it differently, doing it with the needs of the neighbors before them. And in the news of the aftermath of Newtown, Connecticut, we may be asking, what then should we do? If we listen to these words from John the Baptist, one of the best things we can do is to go back to our routines, go back to our regular schedules. This isn't forgetting. This isn't denying. But when we go there, let us look for the ways in which we can lend a hand to a neighbor in need. How can you help someone from the place you are already called to be. And wherever you go, remember this. At Christmas, we call God by the name Emmanuel. You may hear the scripture passage from Matthew chapter 1 read. It says this, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. 
Emmanuel does not mean God give us. In the sense that God gives us what, what we want for Christmas, be it a certain present, a perfect decorated house, a peaceful family gathering, or a prices right showcase showdown. Emmanuel means God with us. God was with Mary and Joseph as they feared the safety of their newborn son. God is with Newtown, Connecticut, and San Diego Elementary School. And God is with us as Bethel Lutheran Church as we go through all the different emotions, questions, and feelings we encounter today. Bethel is the house of the Lord, and God is most certainly with us here. But as Emmanuel, God with us, as Emmanuel, God reminds us, Jesus is not only here in his house, but Jesus is everywhere. Emmanuel reminds us that God is with you wherever you go. God is with you when you are at work. God is with you when you are at home. And God is most certainly with you when you are at school and when the kids are at school. Bethel is the house of the Lord, but the whole world is also the house of the Lord. May this God this Emmanuel who loves us all very, very, very much. Be with us today in the tension in between tragedy and celebration and the days and weeks to come. Let us pray. Be near me, Lord Jesus. Be near us, Lord Jesus, we ask thee to stay. Close by us forever and love us, we pray. Bless all thy dear children in thy tender care. And fit us for heaven to live with thee there. Amen.